spell on you. I don't make Halloween decorations very often because actually Christmas is my favorite time of the year. I mean, look around here. Does it look like I need any more Halloween decorations? I'm going to start out with these boxes. I believe these are a 6, 8, and 10 inch. And Mr. Meow wants to move into them, but you have your own apartment. He likes to sit in boxes on our kitchen table. That's his new thing. He lives at the Kurt Glenn Signature Suites. Um, that has to be painted and everything has to be painted so I can start. There we go. Everything is painted. I painted everything orange. The first plan that I have is I'm going to glitter the top of all of the boxes. The thing about this is I'm not going to have to do the whole thing since the boxes are going to be on top of each other so I'm just going to focus on the outer part. I'll use this Elmer's craft bond and I got this orange color Martha Stewart or no is this Martha Stewart I don't know recollections because it has some green in it it's actually called a pumpkin Ooh. Ooh. I did all three lids for sure what I'm doing to all of them is this box pleat trim I'm going to put on the bottom like so because it looks like frosting. Again, I just did my nails last night and they are destroyed. But such is life. So I'm thinking of putting one in the middle of each on the front and then writing something spooky, ooky, ooky. I put a spell on you, maybe. Look at this guy. He's got wire. So we'll put these guys on there somewhere too, because they like to mess with the cat. Because I have black glitter letters instead of white and I'm gonna work with what I have I'm taking a white paint pen and I'm making an area white on these black stickers so I can put these on and they'll stand out so that's the plan. I just think using a paint pen is easier than a paint brush for something like this. Now here comes the interesting part, and that is to decide what exactly I'm going to be putting on all of these. These are dry. Yep, kind of. I decided on this. What I'm going to do is first I'm going to put it, this is a really pretty trim with like a fringe thing.
Okay, so I have this all the way around laying flat. Um, I put a little bit of glue on some of the edges here so it stays flat and it'll dry clear. So that's that. And I'll put the bottom trim on. This is a box pleat satin. These things have seams, so it's best if you start at the seam because that'll be the back. And the box pleat, <coughs> I have a tip for the box pleat. Sometimes they come on a roll like this. This is how I buy it. And then when it's, it gets a little bit down into the inside, these start getting squashed. So if you put the piece that you want to use in the dryer, it will unsquash and it'll be like this again. I stick a pin in the beginning to keep it from doing this. Remember when you're putting this one on that it's going to sit flat so you have to make sure that it's flat you know so when you put it down it it's not sitting on any of the ribbon for the top piece i have this cool spiderweb material and i think i'm going to put it like over the whole thing so for the top one i put the spider webs on and you can see that i have pins in in it so to make sure it lays flat remember that since you're going to be putting the lid back on to not have lace or material that's too thick otherwise when you try to close it it's not going to close mm -hmm. for the middle one i found this trim that i had <gasps> that's going to be beautiful Because the trim has this pretty edge, which I should glue down a little bit more, I don't think that I'm going to put this scallop in the middle. But I'll see. I'll see. Since the middle is going to be so dark, the trim I'm going to use for around here will probably just be these for the middle. I'm going to work on the top and the bottom one and I'm using these recollection stickers. That's what these are too. I'm just going to use the use different ones off of this sheet to put around the top part and the bottom. So well, that's what I'm going to do now. Doing this with nails. One of the reasons why my nails look like they do. <laughs> OCD. Okay. So then I'm going to glue a few more around the edge. Okay, I got the bottom one done now. See, I didn't have a, I didn't have enough of this, so I kind of broke it up and made another pattern. This is taking me a while, <laughs> but it's because I designing it on the fly. Okay, so now I have the bottom box put together. And it looks like a piece of cake. This lid went okay over this, but I'll show you how. Let's not dry it. This is still kind of wet a little bit. I'll show you how it sometimes will get a little hard to put the lids on, even 
with super flat stuff. Sometimes on these boxes, it's really difficult to get the lid back on the box, especially if something's going to be on it like this. So, with the glue on, which is even better, I put masking tape around the edge. And you want to make sure that it's not going to be too, you know, don't put it too deep. So, I believe that this will help it go on eat with a lot more ease and it will keep the fabric <gasps> from bunching up. See that? Pretty cool, pretty cool. So now with the aid of the masking tape, it should go on easier. See, you see how it's got this gap here. This one was kind of difficult to begin with. So you kind of like got to push it in. Come on without damaging everything. So this one's a pain in the butt. But, but, see, because of the tape, it makes it a lot easier without it bunching. Now I'm going to put the words on. And these are stickers, but I'll probably glue them on so they don't fall off. I'm going to put the put on the top one here. I don't know if I have room for an eye. It doesn't look like it. So I'm probably just going to write, put a spell on you. I'm going to make this paper mache cat. So what you need to start is a plastic bag. I have a sprouts bag and it's kind of thicker than normal plastic bags. And a ple a pleatha cloth, a pleatha a pleatha cloth. A piece of cloth. This is like a piece of a t-shirt that I cut. So, roll it up like this. Turn it into a, some kind of a head like that. There's a kitty head, right? Put it in the bag. Roll it up. Crunch it up. Okay. So you got <coughs> like this lumpy round thing. Just like that. And then so this is where you take the masking tape. To, you're just going to start constructing this head thing so it looks kind of like a cat. I didn't push record when I cut when I was showing how to make the kitty ears. Obviously this is a toilet paper roll. See, it was a roll. Cut it in half and then cut triangles out of those sides. So like you would take and then I use one ear 
as a template for the other ear. And there you go. And you have the kitty ears. And they're nice and curved, see? Like kitty ears. I'm going to put the ears on. And I'm going, going to tape the ears on like this, like put it on some of the ear and then onto the head to start. Now both kitty ears are on and I have to now sculpt a face. I'm going to use paper towels. Like I said, cotton balls are probably better, but I don't have cotton balls right now. I'm going to do a nose first, a little triangle nose. So I'm going to cut let's see i'm going to cut some triangle take a piece of tape and i'm going to put it about i'm going to put it down farther because I want this kitty to look more like a kitten. Okay, so now I actually built it up some more, but the video got screwed up. <laughs> See, look, you can sculpt it pretty good like that. Now I'm going to make some cheekies. I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to do a time lapse of building the mouth. You could see that it's shaped like a cat. I mean, I hope so. Working on the chin. It's a tinier chin than the one. I think, I think this cat's a little bit fatter than the first one that's actually on the cake. I'm going to fatten up the cheeks and bring out the chin a little bit more and put a little bit of fullness back here. So 
So he's pretty much sculpted, but I'm going to totally smooth it out more with tape. So this is what I have so far, and he's kind of lumpy. So here's the beginning of it before I do the paper mache part. It's pretty crude, but that's the look that I'm actually going for. You know what I mean? Now I'm gonna start the paper mache part. The glue that I've been using all through the thing is this craft bond stuff. And I mixed it with water. I'd say what? one to five parts water maybe i don't know just so it's like you know watery water cut up a bunch of strips of paper Ooh, there's eyelashes on sale and stick them in this glue mixture what glue mixture water mixture i had to go out and buy a newspaper because i do not read the newspaper and just start putting it on, trying to make it as smooth as possible. Now I'll let it dry. Try to get everything laying down nicely so when you paint it, you don't have weird seams and stuff. So I'm gonna let it dry outside. Like I sit it on a, on a, uh, see these are, this is crazy back here. Gotta fix that. sit it on a on like a cup and let it dry overnight and then spray paint it black not bad for my first my first time doing a slappy glue thing what is it called paper mache i'm gonna put a cute face on them and then and a bow tie and you know some kind of some kind of material coming up well I guess you'll be able to see what I did from the picture
now that I have this little cutie painted, I think I'm going to put little red, let's see how they would look. Ooh, that would be cute. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Put two little red crystals on his eyeballs. A lot of times I don't want to go back out and get something. And in this case, I needed wire. So <laughs> I deconstructed a, you can see here, all the stuff coming apart. A, um, what are those bendy things called? The bendy things with the, with the stuff on them. What are these called? Pipe cleaner. I cut all the pipe cleaner off, all the hair. And now I'm untwisting it. So I have, because I want super, super thin wire for what I'm going to do. And um, also, I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> I straightened it now and cut them into smaller pieces so I could use them. You can make life so much more easy and go by wire. But what's the fun of that? Yeah, I decided that I'm going to put little stars up above the cat's head too. And I wanted to make them perfect. So I printed some out on um, matte photo paper because it's a little bit thicker and then I'll glue them to the stick I like this size I printed out different sizes because I wasn't sure and then I might I might put a couple other on And I'm going to put them, stick them in his head. I'm going to put three of them on top of his head. So they're like this, you know. So it looks like he's going... Instead of him just sitting on the cake like this, um, I'm putting some of this trim, which is super cool because it's like fur. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pin it in probably. Or just lay it on. It needs to be a little shorter. So it's really hairy. I like different trim. I I don't like. I'll show you the trim I don't like. Where is it? This trim. I think it's cheese ball, and it just makes things look cheesy. Cheese ball cheesy. So if I put this like this, okay. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna put a pin in it. Cause you won't see it because he'll be sitting on top of it like this. Okay, but also to go on top of that I made so another even rougher layer of ruffle. I took some of this ribbon 
and made a box pleat. This is the only thing I sewed, is I made a bo box pleat like this. You just sew it as you're doing this, okay? And it makes like that ruffle thing. You could do, I mean, this is the specialty ribbon that I got at Joann's, but you could do it with just the plain stuff. That looks ugly from here. Is it even, it's not even even. You tell me. For corn's sake. Oh, I still got the pin in my hair. Okay, so this is, it'll look like a collar and fur. You can find trim on clothes at thrift stores and cut them off. I do that a lot. See, that looks cool. And then we're gonna put him on top of like that. <gasps> this is a little tutu skirt that I got from a thrift store. And I'm going to use it as the base of it. And even, even if you don't have one of these, I mean, you can make one out of tulle, super easy. Just put tulle on the bottom. So I just figured out where to put the last bird, and I guess I'm just going to stick them there, because I think it's funny. And there you have it. That's what it looks like on the tulle skirt. And I think it's a pretty cool idea. If I would have put a spell on somebody, it would probably be to come do my dishes, to mop, sweep. Oops, gotta glue that on a little bit better. So have some fun and make your own. I'm curious to see what yours looks like. I'm thinking of making one in purple and black. Hmm. The ideas are churning in my head. You don't have to make one that looks exactly like this one. You know, you can use the paper mache idea and make something else, make a unicorn head or make a, you know, crazy something monster and stick it on top. Or put a witch hat on the top or something. It'll be fun to see what you come up with.